Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. If Gifitnib comes back to the U.S. market, that will obviously be the third TKI um, in this setting. So I think, you know, it's always nice to have choices. It brings competition. Hopefully it will bring a bit of uh, a cost war, so to speak, and make it uh, uh, kind of cheaper for patients. Uh, these oral therapies sometimes are associated with out-of-pocket co-pays and that sort of thing. So uh, perhaps um, that, uh, the addition of, of Gifitnib would um, uh, allow us to kind of be a bit more competitive in terms of cost. Uh, Gifitnib is an in interesting drug in terms of its drug development in the sense that uh, this drug was developed before the knowledge of EGFR mutations. And so um, when you're first developing a drug and you see activity at low doses, then you say, well, it, it's, this is a, seems to be a biologically effective dose, even though it's not really the maximum tolerated dose. And so Gifitnib was, you know, uh, administered at 250 milligrams, which is probably about a third of the maximum tolerated dose. Now, uh, uh, erlotinib and afatinib are given at largely maximum tolerated doses. You'll have more toxicity. And I think one of the advantages of gefitinib is their data is uh, uh, largely with all 250 milligrams. Um, it looks very similar to the other two, but it's uh, going to be less toxic um, and principally less skin and uh, GI toxicity. So that could create an advantage for patients. Um, so toxicity and cost will, may win out with that drug and that would be a welcome um, addition. Um, from an efficacy point of view, again, I think it's, it's really difficult to distinguish one is better than the other.